So Gary uh, in Mendham has posted a, a really long response video to me. Um, I haven't watched all of it yet, but I'm going to respond to at least the first 11 or 12 minutes uh, of it, um, where Gary kind of accuses me of, uh, of not being an evolutionary thinker or of being someone who is antagonistic towards the sort of evolutionary understanding of the universe. And, you know, I actually think, like uh, the Jesuit paleontologist uh, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, that not only is evolution true, it is um, the new uh, foundation upon which every other science must now come to rest. Um, Evolution is true not only of uh, our biological organism, not only of our cultural psychology, uh, our social and cultural psychology, but also of the universe itself. All of it is evolutionary. Um, so we can't do cosmology, we can't do biology, um, we can't do psychology and sociology unless we understand evolution, right? So, no, I'm not an anti-evolutionary thinker. I think that everything about reality is historical, has emerged in historical time, uh, according to certain principles that we can understand. Now, in the modern sort of Anglo-American um, popular context, it's Darwin who has kind of defined the meaning of, of evolution for us in terms of this one set of principles, this one mechanism, um, which is uh, variation under natural selection, sort of random variation under natural selection. Um, Darwin himself didn't necessarily believe that variation uh, in organisms was random. He recognized the sort of holistic uh, kind of uh, unity uh, to the whole organism, to the form of, uh, or the, the sort of body plan of, of the entire creature, uh, that, you know, however these variations and mutations were happening, they weren't just happening sort of piecemeal in terms of accidental um, you know, what we've later come to realize are genetic um, variations in just these little gene units, right? Darwin actually recognized the way that there's this sort of holistic uh, element, a creative element to the, the individual organism, uh, and that when speciation occurs, it occurs in a mysterious way. Um, all that Darwin wanted to claim that he had explained, or what he wanted to say that his explanation offered was uh, one account of how change could occur over time. He wasn't trying to explain how that change or what, what the cause of that change really was, you know, like what variation really means. Um, he was just trying to s define a particular kind of variation that could be random or could not be, but that regardless, uh, could transform over time in such a way that it became at least apparently designed uh, to exist in a particular niche or environmental context. Um, so Darwin does kind of offer a possible mechanism that could account for the change of species over the course of historical geological time. And historically, atheists, um, materialists, scientific materialists have championed uh, Darwin's Origin of Species, uh, his book, as a kind of refutation of theism, kind of um, refutation of uh, William Paley's natural theology. Uh, of intelligent design. You know, we've been having this argument that, you know, today the Discovery Institute and uh, the, you know, atheists of the world like Dawkins and 
uh, Dennett and uh, Sam Harris and so on, uh, this war that, that they're existing in, we've been waging it for more than 150 years. Uh, and what I like to point out when I talk about Darwin is that he's really playing within the same um, uh, paradigmatic field um, as William Paley was. He, he's, he, he's working within a mechanistic ontology of design where organisms are understood to be machines. You know, Paley believed this just as much as, as Darwin. Now, they both disagreed about the human soul, um, perhaps, but that's another matter. Um, what they agreed on is that organisms could be understood as machines that are externally designed, whose, whose parts are assembled, whose uh, attributes are assembled um, from the outside in by the selection of either uh, nature, capital N, or uh, God, right? So the only difference between Darwin and Paley is uh, which side of this puzzle is given divine status. Are we going to divinize nature and say that that is the selector of all of, of the form uh, that we see on the planet around us, or are we going to divinize God and say that some sort of an intelligence has guided the formation of various um, species uh, in the universe and on the planet Earth? And I think instead of trying to think in terms of this particular paradigm of, of design, as William Paley and Charles Darwin did, um, I would want to think in terms of an organic um, ontology where evolution is not a mechanistic process or a purposeless process, uh, you know, nor is it a, a trans transcendently designed, um, is there a transcendently designed purpose for the universe? I think uh, the intelligence and the purpose of an organic universe uh, comes from the, out of the, you know, poetic depths of that organism itself, not from something external to the organism. So it's a purpose that's discovered in the act, um, rather than a purpose determined uh, in advance. So instead of there being kind of one teleology guiding the whole enterprise of reality, we could say that actually there are teloi, right? Plural purposes all interacting, sometimes in a harmonious way and other times in a disharmonious, discordant way. Um, but uh, in the end, is that the sheer fact of the, the, that there is anything at all and that we can recognize aspects of it suggests that you know the cooperative tendency of all of these interacting purposes has won out over the competitive uh, purposes right so overall there is cosmos not chaos though cosmos is always threatened at various places and in various times with chaos it's never a sure thing the order of the universe, the purpose, the intelligent principles which guide its activity are not determined uh, eternally, right? They're not fixed laws. There are no fixed laws, whether we're talking about the physical, the biological, or the cultural world. Laws are made in the process of, of the universe's becoming. They unfold in the course of time, so there's an evolution not only of predetermined things, but of the, an evolution of the very laws determining things. You know, if we're going to speak in those terms. So, evolution is a very complex topic, and maybe much of what I've had to say seems a little convoluted, but um, 
I think we always kind of have to begin in the middle of things, right? And always approach the things that we think we understand uh, in an experimental way, such that we can discover their intricacies anew each time we engage with them. So that's, those are some thoughts on evolution in the woods for you. Um, my kind of evolution that uh, you know, I didn't make up myself, but that I've uh, come to learn, appreciate, and understand uh, as, as part of a, the inheritor of, um, of a tradition of organic philosophy. Um, so, yeah, thanks for coming along on that little journey.